five, four, three, two, one. Old school only is go. <laughs> G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing all those fun jobs, looking for bits and pieces that I know I've got and finding out pieces that I don't have. Um, this part of the build is when you start to get into the nitty gritty and things take a little bit longer. But right now I'm looking at some ignition parts and deciding what to do. Let's have a look. So I showed you in the last video my early style distributor that mounts on the front of the motor and I've pulled it apart and just to check that everything's okay um, everything appears to look okay I am missing a condenser which you'd replace anyway and I'm also missing the rotor button um, which should be easy to find um, this piece that sits on the top is the coil now I've worked out that this distributor is off a 1934 model vehicle which shouldn't be a problem I've checked the resistance um, through the coil and it appears to be within spec according to the internet. Um, reliability wise it should be fairly reliable um, but I am considering my options and here's what I've got. With the um, early dizzies they were a three bolt so they're bolted on with three bolts. The next style of distributor was a two bolt and um, they were called a crab dizzy. Now I've got one in amongst my stuff. I can't find it, but I know I have one. Um, I've been looking this morning. There's a distributor cap off it, and you can see what's called a crab dizzy because it looks like a crab. The dizzy cap does, and these have a conventional rotor button with conventional points. A little bit easier to maintain, and um, the only difference is it doesn't bolt onto the earlier style block because they've got three bolts as opposed to two bolts but there is an option so you can buy these adapter plates and I'll show you a pick so you can bolt up a two bolt distributor the later distributor now I have a later engine in the back where that crab dizzy came off um, and I've earmarked that for another project and why I'm not using it on this one this is an early build the other one's a later build. I want the sort of engines to fit the, the era and the criteria that I'm building. So I don't want to use that other engine. I could solve a lot of my problems by using that later engine, but I'm not going to. Um, but what I did buy for that engine quite a while back was an electronic ignition for it. And you can see it's got the two bolts as opposed to the three. And um, so hopefully. I can get one of these adapters and make something super reliable. Now if you've mucked around with these things they can be unreliable, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, I've had this one for a while, I've never used it, fingers crossed it's okay but what I'm considering doing is putting this one on it, um, two wires and it works. Um, should be reliable but I am considering and I probably will do it, rebuilding the crab dizzy so if I have a failure on the road with this I can put a points dizzy in it on the side of the road so that's probably going to be the plan hopefully this is fine but it's nice to have a backup so let's go and have a look at some other stuff remember I was talking about the last video about my headers I was right, I'll show you oh and for anyone that was concerned about not painting my gearbox I painted my gearbox looks good righto so I've just bolted in the starter motor, one of my starter motors here, just for see the clearance on this header. And I was right. Hang on, it's tangled up here. It does not fit. It's a mile out. And I'm like, fair dinkum. That's just ridiculous. But I think I've worked out what old mate did wrong. If I get the one for the other side, it fits. The only problem is the center flange 
has been welded on the wrong way. So I think he's put them together wrong. So all I've got to do, which is excellent news, is cut that off, spin it to the right angle, weld it back on, and we'll have a set of headers that are going to fit. And I'm obviously going to have to do that to the other one for the other side because they're, they're different. So they'll work. Just got to modify them. Yeah, so this video, as you're starting to work out, is all the little things I've got to work out. That I've got to modify, change, fix, parts are missing, I've got to look for, and um, it's an important part of the build process, especially with the time frame that I've got. I don't have forever to get this done. I need to know what I've got to buy. I need to know what's missing or know what to look for. Um, otherwise, I'm going to get caught with my pants down, and you don't want to see that. So on the back of a side valve engine, um, as opposed to a Model A, Model A is where gravity feed for the carburetor. Um, carburetor sits quite high on this. I might be able to gravity feed it, but I'm not going to risk it. Um, you put your oil in there and your fuel pump goes there. Now, I have one of those units here. Needs cleaning up, of course, but that's your fuel pump. That's where your oil goes in. And there's a push rod that comes off the, the camshaft and pushes up and down and makes your fuel pump work. Now for some reason, the engine and that, that this came off, the push rod isn't in there. It would have been, so I've got it kicking around somewhere. That's one of those things that like, if I can't find it, I've got to buy it. Um, but that mounts on there like that. And then, that's where you can fill your oil. And we'll run that to the original Model A fuel tank and we'll have pressure to our carburetor. Righto, the next thing I've got to work out is my alternator or generator. This is an original generator, which is cactus. I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit dark with the light behind me, but it bolts up right there. And there's a nut, which is in my pocket. And the washer. And um, they give you your belt adjustment. And obviously the alternator or generator gives you a power to charge your battery. Um, that's no good and I want to run 12 volts. Let me get the camera in a better angle. Hang on. So you see it better there. It slides into there and goes up and down. So what I need to do by either using this bracket, cut that off, or make a whole new bracket, which wouldn't be hard, is use a later, I'll find a the alternator somewhere 12 volt and we'll convert it make it fit and mount on here um, hopefully we can have a pulley big enough to run the big B or whatever they are might be bigger than a B belt but it's been done a million times that's one of the things I've got to nut out but sitting like that you'll get a bit of an idea what it's going to look like it'll all be painted up obviously once I fix everything up so he's looking good but now for the radiator, I bought this thing, um, you've probably seen this one before, um, it is for a small block shove I think, it'll work perfectly except it doesn't have the right outlets, I need two at the top, so I need another, I need one to there, one to there, one to here, and then one to there, so what I've got to do is weld in an outlet, cut it out, weld an outlet there and then down the bottom, cut it out, weld an outlet there I've got a mate that can do that and that'll make this radiator suitable for this build another little job that's got to get done and as far as a fan goes for the cooling I'm just going to use electric fan for now yeah it goes against the old school thing but I need to get this thing on the road I'll probably change it to a mechanical fan which I prefer um, but we'll chuck an electric on it nice and easy, nice and quick. It'll work and um, it'll be reliable for the time being. Hiding up in my roof here, I've got my 32 grill shell and I bought a stack of mild steel bars. I think they're 6 point something mil, 6.3 mil diameter bars. Um, and I'm gonna weld the bars to the grill and make it look kind of like the commercial grill. I don't wanna make it look like a sedan grill um, so it'll be a bit of a custom, but that's an episode coming up. We'll get into that and make that grill. That'll be a fun job. As far as the brakes go, the brakes aren't that old in this thing. Um, and I've got brake lines 
made up that were in the mongrel. The only thing that I have to do really is mount my master cylinder and then make sure I can bolt that up and then we'll have brakes. As far as the clutch goes, the clutch is going to work and I touched on this on another video. Um, it's just going to bolt directly to this little clutch shaft here. So that's going to be mechanical and be nice and easy. Now as far as wiring harness goes, I bought a whole heap of these and I'll grab one down and I'll show you. Um, I bought them a while back and I've been using these in most of my builds. They're a good little harness. I don't know, I bought these eight or nine years ago. Um, I think they're $80 each, which was a bit of a bargain, but everything's in there. All you've got to do really is make up your headlight and engine bay harness, but everything else is there. So there's my wiring harness, and um, it's not very difficult at all. I don't mind wiring, it's one of the fun things of building a car. In my opinion anyway, I enjoy it. Now you would have seen these wheels on the front. These are off a 1930-31 Model A Ford. They're just on there to roll it around. I'm not using those wheels. Let me show you what I've got. I've got a pair of 17-inch 1934 wheels I'm going to run on the front. I've got to get these old tyres off. I'll soak these in citric acid, get it all cleaned up. If you haven't seen that before, that's another episode, which will be shortly. Um, completely takes the rust off overnight. It's amazing stuff, so I'll show you how that works. We'll give them a coat of paint, put the new tyres on. And for the rears, I'm just going to run these 15s with the 850s on it. They're going to be perfect. That's the mechanical stuff sorted out. I've none of it in my head anyway. I know what I've got to do. Um, the next thing I've got to start thinking about, and thinking about quickly, is the body. This cab over here, as you would be well aware, needs a lot of work. I've got to take another couple of inches out of the top of this. And I've got to weld up all these panels and try and make it look reasonable. Once that's done, then I can paint it. And I've got some great patina ideas for this. I've got the colour sorted out. you got to enjoy that. And the old tub sitting out here at the moment, just out of the way. But I've got all the bra bracketry and all the bits and pieces to build this tub when i got it. So that'll be another episode. We'll make that tub up. Um, we'll hinge it, make it nice and solid, and we'll bolt it to the chassis. Not a big job, but it'll be an episode. As far as fenders go... Um, I don't know if I'm going to have time to get these on but I'm still going to work on the idea of running it full fended in the meantime I'm probably just going to run cycle guards for Rego for the first time and then um, we'll bolt these on if you haven't seen the other videos a Model A chassis is flat 32 and up chassis are curved at the front so the fenders don't fit on so they've got to be heavily modified to make them work otherwise I'd just bolt them on but they can't Rears I can bolt on, fronts need a massive amount of work. So I'm going to run out of time I think to do that. The goal is to get it on the road and cycle guards are easy and fast to make. So we'll probably just do that for the time being anyway. So that's kind of where I'm at and where my brain is. It's just mumbo jumbo going on in there. and um, But it's all coming to plan. So I think in the next video while I'm working out what I need to order and parts are coming from wherever they've got to come from. Oh, I did manage to find a head gasket too, so that'll be here soon. Um, next job, I might button down these brakes and the clutch so the pedals work. That's a job out of the way. And then after that, I think it's bolt on what we can bolt on as we get the bits and pieces to put this engine together and start working on the body because that's the biggest part of this build. So anyway... Hope you enjoyed that. Just a little update, let you know where we're at and what we're up to. Um, it's all happening and I'm going to be a busy boy for a while, but I'm enjoying it. Stay tuned. Be good to your mates. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.